Welcome to another English video lessons today. I'm going to discuss manner of articulation, places of articulation, and phonation of the consonant. I'm going to discuss the manner of articulation, places of articulation, and phonation of the consonant. Let's have into account first the manner of articulation. The manner of articulation refers to the way in which a speech sound is produced by the speech organs. When we talk of the speech organs, we are referring to the lips, tongue, and the palate. The manner of articulation also describes how the airstream is modified by the vocal tract to produce sounds. English has the following sounds produced through the manner of articulation. We have nasal, Stop, fricative, affricate, approximate, and lateral. For number one, we have nasal consonants. Nasal consonants are created when you completely block airflow through your mouth and let the air passes through your nose. English has the following nasal consonant sounds. Now, when articulating these sounds, you are encouraged to have your speech organs so that you can really feel them. Again, English has the following nasal consonant sounds. The first sound is mm. In words, Mad, clam. When articulating this sound, the oral passage is blocked by closing the lips. The words that are in enclosed parentheses are the places of articulation. By the way, I'm going to discuss the places of articulation in a separate slides presentation so that there will be better understanding, okay? Again, this sound is mm. The next sound is mm. In words, no, man. When articulating this sound, the oral passage is blocked by pressing the tongue tip against the alveolar ridge. Okay? This is the place of articulation. The next sound is mm. This is an IPA symbol that represents mm sound. Say, for example, bring. Sink. When articulating this sound, the oral passage is blocked by pressing the back of your tongue against the soft palate. The next sound is the stop or plosives. Stop or plosives are created when the airstream is blocked or stopped completely before it releases. English has the following stop sounds, and these are in words worse, rap. This sound is b, b, in words back, cab. Both these sounds are bilabial. We're in to articulate this sound, the oral passage is blocked by closing 
the lips. The next sounds are t, t, in words tab, rat, d, d, in words dip, bad. These two sounds are both alveolar. And to articulate these sounds, the oral passage is blocked by pressing the tongue tip against the alveolar ridge. Once again, t, d. The next sounds are k, k, in words kite, back, g, g. In words, good, bad. These two sounds are under velar. To articulate these sounds, it blocks airflow with the back of the tongue against the soft palate. Once again, k, g. Next, we have the fricative sounds. These sounds involve only a partial blockage of the vocal tract so that air has to be forced through a narrow channel. English has the following fricative sounds. These are th in words fro, calf. The next sound is m. Mm. In words, vine, have. These two sounds are both labiodental. To articulate this sound, the air is forced through the upper teeth and lower lip. Once again, mm. The next sounds are the soft TH and the hard TH sound. This is an IPA symbol that represents the soft TH sound, used in words thick, bad. Well, this is an IPA symbol that represents the hard TH sound, used in words the. Rubber. Both these sounds are under dental. And to articulate these sounds, the air is forced through the upper teeth and the tongue. Again, this is, well, this is, mm. the next sounds are in words, soot, boss. Z in words, zit, jazz. Both the sounds are produced in the alveolar. To articulate the sounds, the air is forced through tongue and alveolar ridge. This is an IPA symbol that represents the sound shh, shh, in words shut, brush, zh, zh, in words vision, vision, measure, measure. Both these sounds are produced in the post-alveolar. To articulate these sounds, the air is forced through the tongue and point just beyond the alveolar ridge. Again, shh, zh. Next is the affricate sounds. These sounds happen when stop consonants mix with fricative consonants. English has the following affricate sounds. 
This is an IPA symbol that represents the sound ch, ch, in words chick match. The next sound is j, j, in words jam, badge. Both these sounds are produced in the post alveolar. And to articulate this sound, the air is blocked with tongue just beyond the alveolar ridge, then released as a fricative. Again, ch, j. Then we have the approximant. These sounds occur when vocal organs come near to each other but not so close as to cause audible friction. English has the following approximant sounds and these are ooh. In words, wet, which. This sound is produced in the velar. And as you notice, the back of your tongue raises to vellum, but not too close, and lips are rounded. Again, mm. The next sound is e. E. This is an IPA symbol that represents E sound. Say, for example, yes, by you. This is produced in the palatal. The tongue raises to hard palate but not too close. Again, E. The next sound is R. In words, right, roar. The tongue raises to hard palate but not too close. And this sound is produced in either alveolar or post-alveolar. The last sound is the lateral consonant. This sound occurs when the tongue blocks the middle of your mouth so that air has to pass around the sides. English has only one lateral consonant sound, and this is O. Oh. O. Oh. Used in word luck. Okay, when you articulate this sound, you have to place the tip of your tongue at the alveolar ridge. Again, Oh. Then we have the places of articulation. Places of articulation points out to the different parts of our vocal tract and how those parts affect speech sounds. It also discusses how the consonants are formed. Now, while discussing the places of articulation, I'm also going to discuss the phonation of the consonant. The phonation of the consonant refers to the amount of vibration of the vocal cords during the articulation of the sounds. The sounds that vibrate the vocal cords during pronunciation are called voiced, and those that don't are called voiceless. Under the place of articulation, we have the bilabial consonants. Bilabial consonants occur when you block or constrict airflow out of the mouth by bringing your lips together. These are the following sounds produced in the bilabial. We're going to categorize these sounds as to voiced or voiceless sounds. Remember, 
This sounds could also be found in the manner of articulation. The only difference is that all these sounds are grouped according to its places of articulation. For us to easily identify whether these consonants are produced with vibration or not, you may have your hand placed in the larynx part or what we call the voice box. Let's start. The first sound is p, p. Can you feel the vibration? Again, p, p. There is no vibration while producing this sound, meaning to say this will fall under voiceless consonant. The next sound is b, b. You can feel the vibration, and that means this is under voiced consonant. The third sound is m, mm, m. Mm. Again, there is also vibration, and that means this is a voiced consonant. The second one is the labiodental consonant. Labiodental consonants occur when you block or constrict airflow by curling your lip back and raising it to touch your upper row of teeth. We have the following sounds, and these are again. There is no vibration when producing the sound, meaning to say this sound is considered voiceless. Next in line, we have v. v. You can easily feel the vibration and this will fall under voiced consonant. Then we have the dental consonants. These sounds occur when you block or constrict airflow by placing your slim tongue against your upper teeth. This is an IPA symbol that represents the soft pH sound. Place your hand in the voice box and say, There is no vibration, and that means this is a voiceless consonant. On the other hand, this IPA symbol represents the sound mm. Mm. There is a vibration, and that means this is a voiced consonant. We have the alveolar consonants. The alveolar ridge is where your teeth meet your gums. This picture shows the alveolar. Alveolar consonants are created when you raise your tongue to the alveolar ridge to block or constrict airflow. English has the following sounds produced in the alveolar. These are mm, mm. Place your hand in your larynx and say mm, mm. There is a vibration and that means this is considered voiced consonant. Next is no vibration, and this is an example of 
voiceless consonant. The next sound is d, d. There is a vibration, and this is an example also of voiced consonant. The next sound is s, s. There is no vibration, and that means this sound is an example of voiceless consonant. Next, we have z, z. There is vibration, and this is an example of voiced consonant. Then we have l, l. You can feel the vibration in your voice box, and that means that this sound is an example of voiced consonant. Then we have the post-alveolar consonants. This is an image of our post-alveolar. These sounds occur when the tongue blocks or constricts airflow at the point just beyond the alveolar ridge. This IPA symbol represents the sound shh now place your hand in your voice box and say shh shh there is no vibration and that means this sound is an example of voiceless consonant the next IPA symbol is zh, zh, used in words vision or measure. Let us produce this sound. Zh, zh. There is a vibration, and that means this sound is considered voice consonant. Next sound is ch, ch. There is no vibration, so that means this sound is under voiceless consonant. Next is j, j. used in words jam, badge. Again, j, j. We can feel the vibration while having the sound, so that means this is under voiced consonant. Next, we have palatal consonant. This sound occurs when you raise the tongue to this point and constrict airflow. This image shows where palatal is to be found. English has only one palatal consonant sound produced, and this is E sound, used in words yes, by. Again, E, E. We can really feel that there is vibration when producing this sound. And that means this will fall under voiced consonant. Next is the velar consonants. These sounds are created when you raise the back of your tongue to the velum to block or restrict airflow. This image shows where the velar is to be found. And English has the following sounds under velar consonants. Again, to identify whether these sounds are voiced or voiceless, place your hand in your voice box and produce the sound mm, mm. 
there is a vibration and that means this sound will fall under voiced sound. Next, we have k, k. There is no vibration. And this is considered voiceless consonant. Next, we have g, g. You can feel that there is vibration and that means this will fall under voiced consonant. Next, we have ooh, ooh. You can feel the vibration and that means this is an example of voiced consonants. The last one is the glottal consonant. The glottis is actually two vocal folds. It acts as a sort of bottle top to your windpipe. And this picture shows the glottal. The glottal consonant aren't usually consonants. They just play consonant roles in the language. We have this glottal consonant. Okay. Place your right hand in your larynx and produce the sound. There is no vibration and that means this is an example of voiceless consonant. So this is all about the manner of articulation, places of articulation, and formation of the consonant. I hope you learned something from this discussion. Thank you for watching.